Good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you today, Lionhearts? Today is the Super Bowl. So, I'm up early, got my shower. Joe actually spent the night over at Pollyanna's house because I'm going to pick him up on the way back from the vlog because we're going to go watch the Super Bowl at my friend Kevin's house today. And, uh, and we're actually going to do the vlog over in Beverly Hills. Today, I'm meeting up with a fellow Lionheart and... This was actually something that she wanted to do. She said if I did this vlog that she wanted to come and, and be a part of it. And so today, we're gonna go over and we're gonna visit the house that the legend is, Lucille Ball loved this house so much that when the first time she saw it, she literally walked up to the front door and offered to buy it right then and there and they sold it to her. So we're gonna go see Lucy's house. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, just as I was about to leave, knock at the door, let's see what it is. Wow, very cool, thank you Patrick Crowley. I actually, I've never seen this book, this wasn't on my wish list, so you picked this out. Thank you very much, man, that is so cool, I can't wait to check it out. This is a something interesting I saw somebody using at the park the other day, it's a water bottle that you squeeze, and then the water just comes up and sits in there, so I thought this might be good for hikes, for, uh, for taking jaw. Uh, your, your note was so nice I wanted to read it. It said, uh, Ja, hope that your water bottle provides you with many a refreshing drink. Thanks to you and Jordan for all the uplifting moments that you share. Very cool. Thank you so much. We very much appreciate it. Oh, I just saw another note in there. I didn't see this. It said, Jordan, you may find this book to be an interesting title chronicling LA's changing nature. Thank you for sharing your perspectives as it's relevant to those of us who have a local knowledge of LA. Keep smiling. Dude, thank you so much. That was so nice of you. Wow, check out that building. That is wild. Well, hello, Lauren. Lauren drove all the way up here to be a part of this vlog, and you're a huge Lucy fan, aren't you? Yes, I am. Hi, Lionhearts. This is actually going to be pretty cool because I've been here before, but I've never vlogged anything really Lucy related. I mean, just Desi Lu Studios, but she has a pretty interesting history. And I know you've went to the Palm Springs Museum and saw a lot of her stuff. So I want to talk to you about that after yep. we check out the house. Yep, there's lots of stuff there. And Did you meet her history. daughter? I know her daughter's kind of like living there for right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's out there now. Yeah. Awesome. Right Let's go check out the house. <laughs> well, here we are. Now this street in particular, Roxbury, is pretty famous and I actually at one point considered doing just a whole vlog on this street, but that would be such a waste because I, pe I think people like Jack Benny, Jimmy Stewart, Peter Falk, the Gershwins, I think they deserve their own vlog. So today, we're just out taking a look at the house that was, I would consider Lucy's dream house. I mean, Lucy, you have to understand, when she was born, she had a very bizarre and very poor life. Um, like her mother was considered more of like her sister. She called her mom Dee Dee. So her grandfather was mainly like the, the person that guided the family. And Lucy was also one that guided the family. Like she was, she was kind of the mother of the family in a weird way. And so eventually when she, you know, realized that she wanted to be a dancer, she would go off. And in Hollywood, she pretty much did everything. A lot of people that, um, know of Lucy, only know Lucy from I Love Lucy, and she had a huge career even before that. She had like, I think it was 65 movies that she had made even before she ever did Lucy, and Lucy came about kind of in kind of a weird accident. You see, she, the studio liked her look, but they didn't really know what to do with her, so they put her in everything. And in those days, in the 40s, um, she really, there wasn't really a market for lead comedian actresses. They hired actresses for leads based on being beautiful and making them that in the script. And so there wasn't really a comedy scene. And even when Lucy would do comedy, she, it was pretty obvious that she was really good at it. So. She eventually did a movie, and it was called, um, I believe it was called Too Many Girls. Was that right, Lauren? Yep. She did Too Many Girls, and the, uh, the director actually cast like five of his favorite leading guys or people that he wanted to promote to be in this movie, and when, when all the guys were traveling from New York to come out here to make the movie, they were all kind of like taking bets as to which one of them would woo Lucy. And of course, um, since Ricky Ricardo, you know, as, as we would later know him, Desi Arnaz was one of those men, and he was different, and he was a band leader, she fell for him. 
Now, one of the problems with that was that he had zero respect in Hollywood. They just referred to um, Desi Arnaz as just the bongo player or the Cuban or, you know, they just didn't give him any respect. And so Lucy's career for, you know, the first part of their marriage, I believe they got married in 1940. Um, the first part of their marriage was her taking movies and she was basically like the queen of the B-movie stars while Desi would go all over the country leading his band. And the problem with that was that he was a massive womanizer. In fact, a lot of the times she would go on tour with him if she wasn't filming a movie just because she didn't trust him and he couldn't, he just apparently couldn't keep him, his hands to himself. So what ended up happening, the big change in her career, and it's unfortunate they've, they've renovated this house. It looks similar, but it's not exactly the way it was when she lived here. They, um, so what they did for her career was they actually cast her in a CBS radio show. And I believe this show was called My Favorite Husband. And um, so she was doing this show and that was basically the start of Lucy. Her character on there was basically exactly what we would know Lucy to become. And so with the success of the radio show, they approached her about doing a TV show. The one caveat she had though was that she told them she wanted Desi to be her husband, not the husband that she had on the show. And so they immediately were like, there's no way. Nobody will ever believe that you are married to a Cuban band leader. And she said, well, I am married to a Cuban band leader. So they thought about it and what her and Desi did, and it was pretty ingenious. They basically found some writers, came up with a script, and they did a vaudeville version, and they would go out and tour this version of what they thought the show would be. And when the CBS saw what they were doing, they actually kind of agreed. And Lucy's thought was, you know, it'll make it more interesting if we have Desi, because he's Cuban, we can do more things with the accent and more gags. and. The writers knew that Lucy didn't consider herself a writer. She didn't consider herself even funny. Um, but what she did consider herself was somebody who could follow directions. And so if they wrote out something for her to do, she could make it funny. And so in 1951, CBS gave her and Desi her own show called I Love Lucy. So Lucy pretty much put up with all this infidelity for quite a while and when the show came out it was kind of a it was kind of a shock that it was such a a hit because like I said there was no market for like a funny woman to be the lead of anything and it became a huge huge show. Now one of the weird things is that um, when they did the show when they started the show Lucy Lucy Jr. Lucy Arnaz was already born but Desi Jr. wasn't. So as they were doing this series, Lucy becomes pregnant and just automatically assumes that the show is over and the show will be canceled. And CBS kind of thinks about it for a while and they're like, well, maybe we can kind of hide her behind chairs and everything for a couple episodes, but we can't, there's just no way to, to keep this going. And they didn't, in those days, you didn't say the word pregnant. You said expecting, or you said, you know, you were going to have a child or something like that, but you didn't really show that kind of stuff. I mean, you got to remember Lucy and Ricky slept in separate beds still. So we end up having this, I guess, unfortunate but fortunate occurrence where she's pregnant and this changes everything because when she becomes pregnant she's the first person to ever portray pregnancy or that that series of life on tv and that was her whole thing she said i don't want to hide it i want to actually show the funny part of pregnancy and everything so when she had um little desi jr she actually had Desi Jr. in real life on the same day that the episode aired where she had little Ricky. And when she had the baby, she actually bumped off top news of Ike, Dwight D. Eisenhower. I like Ike being um, inaugurated as president the day after her little uh, Desi's birth. So Lucy had a great life. Unfortunately, everything that you saw on the TV show, the like happy life, that was the only place that happened. She said that when she lived here, she bought this house in 1954 and it's a pretty interesting story how she bought it. She said that her life here with Desi was actually not the picture photo-esque life that you saw on TV and that she said the only time that ever happened was once she arrived at the studio to 
film the episode for that week. So the show was a massive success, but here is the other problem is that, like I said, Desi not only on the road was cheating on her pretty openly, but Hollywood's a big town, especially when you're as famous as they are, and he was doing it here too, and she got tired of just playing the game, and um, in 1954, she was actually driving by this house, saw it, liked it so much, um, Lauren was actually telling me it's because this house reminded her of her house in Jamestown, New York, that the whole family grew up in, and, um, and that's kind of um, why she walked up to the front door and offered to buy the house on the spot. Now, it may seem kind of strange that they would do that, but what was kind of funny about it is that um, she had just gotten an $8 million deal for the show the year before. So this became Lucy's dream home, and her and Desi lived here together from 1954 until 1960 when <clears throat> Lucy would ask for a divorce. Now, it wasn't all roses for Lucy because Lucy was actually, almost had her career ruined. She was accused of being a communist, and not without warrant, because what ended up happening was she had actually registered as a communist at one point. Um, her brother actually described it and said that they pretty much did everything that their grandfather wanted them to do and said that their grandfather, when they were younger, was uh, a, a union worker and that was pretty much, and Shelley told me the same thing that back then, like the studio bosses here and everything, they were all like ex-Russians and that they were like communists. So. If you wanted to be part of the union, that was kind of something that you had to put up with or whatever. And so she's like, that was one of those things that ended up coming back to haunt Lucy. And what they ended up doing was they thought it was going to kill her career. But um, when they, the show came back before the, um, the live studio audience, Lucy always had a live studio audience before they filmed the episode, Ricky came out and explained what happened and basically said, you've only heard one side of the story. The only thing read about Lucy is her hair and that's fake and that's the only thing that will ever be read about her and the whole crowd clapped when she came walking out and the next day the headlines said, you know, we love Lucy and that pretty much went away. Now, like I said, in 1960, as successful as the whole operation was, Desi was like the whole brains of it. He was, he was Desi Lou. He ran everything business-wise and Lucy was the talent. But they just couldn't, they just couldn't keep it together. Um, you know, Desi couldn't keep it together and so Lucy divorces him and actually finds who she considers to be the love of her life a year later, Gary Morton. And Gary moves in here and Lucy ended up living here from 1954 all the way until her death in 1989. And she would raise her daughter and son both here. Now what's funny is that I found an interview of Lucy and she said that she actually she had no problem walking away when she did when she retired. And a lot of people now seem like they can't do that. But what she said was she said, I actually stuck it out five years longer than I ever planned to. And she said the only reason I did that was because I wanted um, little Lucy and little Desi to see if they wanted to be in this business and I wanted to help usher them along in it and get them a start. She said, I always knew that what I was doing, it wasn't meant to, you know, I wasn't meant to be an old lady doing it. So when she walked away, she walked away. 27 years at CBS making television and radio. So after Lucy died, her husband Gary actually sold this house and then the house went through a pretty massive renovation. Um, and now here's what's strange. Ever since she passed away, the owners after her have said that they feel that it's haunted. People that came by during the renovation said that they could see a ghost of Lucy looking sad walking through the house. And Lauren was telling me, I, I had read that Lucy had a favorite like backgammon room that she spent a lot of her later years pretty much holed up at this house a lot and um, entertained a lot of friends, had a lot of parties and had one room that was really special to her. It was like that backgammon sitting room. And that's actually, we'll take you over and show you the windows. And I found pictures of Lucy and little Lucy and little Desi all out here in the front before the house was remodeled, obviously, and one of Lucy also walking down the stairs. So these purple flowers over here, um, Lucy 
uh, always liked to surround herself with things that reminded her of her hometown of Jamestown, New York. And she loved lilacs and grew up around lilac bushes. So she had lilac bushes put into this house over here when she lived here in Beverly Hills. <laughs> now, one of the other things you guys might not know or you might know if you saw my vlog, Lucy actually used to be buried here in Forest Lawn Cemetery, the For Forest Lawn Hollywood. Um, and then her daughter actually decided to move her to New York and said that that was always a request that Lucy had had that she wanted to be buried with her family in New York. So this window over here right behind this tree would have been the, that would have been the backgammon room. And then the backyard beyond all this, there's many, many photos that we're gonna post in here of there was a pool back here and a pool house and actually there used to be two garage, um, I believe, because little Lucy said that when she showed a, an interest in being an actress at a young age, her mother converted one of the garage into a theater and even had dressing rooms on each side and would let little Lucy and little Ricky come out and, uh, and use them to put on little productions. So this we believe is the pool house right back here. And Lauren was saying the, the pool house is the same one that was, that was always with the house. If you look over the fence, you can see there's a few structures in there, so there definitely is still the, the two garages, the pool house, all that stuff back there. Wow. Even Carol Burnett says every single day of her life, she said, Lucy comes into my membrane in the cobwebs of my memories. Every single day, something makes me think of her and I laugh. Nobody was like Lucy, that's for sure. You know what I love about her the most is that one of the things that she was smart enough to do is she saw the the beauty of Charlie Chaplin was that people could feel a sympathy for him. You had this, you could, you could identify with him, but you also felt sad for him. And she put that into her character as well as she was friends with Buster Keaton and Buster Keaton taught her about the importance of using props to the fullest. And so if you watch a lot of those I Love Lucy's, you see the Vitamita Vegemin when she's trying to pour that or you see her trying to make the chocolate balls or you see her crushing the grapes Everything was the using the most of the physicality and the props So since this looks like this would be the the driveway for the alley what we figured out or what we surmised is that This must be one of the garage and then the other garage would be over here and this bigger property right there would actually be the pool house and if you look hard enough there are um there are whole movies online. In fact, in an interview, Lucy said there's like, I forget how many thousands of hours of whole movie footage she has that was all stored in this house. Laura and I were just talking about how crazy that must have been to, to be like Desi Arnaz and make such a successful studio and yet nobody in the film business really gave him any respect and behind his back would, you know, mock him. I just almost can't imagine growing up in that time era. So something interesting is that I Love Lucy was the first sitcom to use the three camera system, uh, all thanks to Carl Freund, with uh, cinematographer, and Desi Arnaz. And you said that Carl actually developed that process, yep. correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Along with Desi Arnaz's help as well, I believe. Well, I think we're going to call it a day over here. I think Lucy's house has had enough of our company, but if you're curious about how successful Desi Lou really was, Beyond I Love Lucy, they're also responsible for Star Trek and The Andy Griffith Show, amongst many, many others. Pretty crazy to think of, uh, you could have come here any Halloween and seen Lucy herself handing out full-size candy bars to the trick-or-treaters. Oh wow, check out that house. That's great. Is that the Statue of Liberty over there? Sure is. Look at that. Oh, nice. Look at that stained glass window. Almost looks like something Van Gogh would have done, doesn't it? 
So since Lauren keeps such a far away, we're gonna go get some coffee over at a uh, kind of a Be Beverly Hills staple. It's called Nate and Al's. So Nate and Al's is actually a Jewish deli, and I mean, pretty much anybody who's anybody has eaten here on a regular basis. I remember seeing an interview with Larry King where he said, if you ever wanna find me, just go to Nate and Al's, I'm usually there. So, well, here we are. Famous Nate and Al's, I can't wait. Wow, nice. Well, we decided to go with the coffee. The Nate and Al's famous uh, 70th anniversary coffee. One thing I thought was kind of worth mentioning was that, you know, one of the things I loved most about I Love Lucy was that Vivian Vance was just like the perfect best friend for Lucy. But one of her complaints was she never she never liked the fact that William Frawley was, was Fred Mertz. She always thought it made her seem too old. But I always thought Fred Mertz was the perfect Fred Mertz. God love William Frawley. So I was actually just saying I didn't I wasn't able to find out like how Vivian Vance became Ethel Mertz. But of course, guess who knew? Tell us the story. So Desi um, had gotten a call that uh, there is this uh, great talent performing at the La Jolla Playhouse in a play called Voice of the Turtle. And sure enough, it was Vivian Vance. He goes and sees, sees the play, loves her, says, Lucy's sight unseen, this is it. She's, she's perfect for the part. So, and the rest is history. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Now we're gonna take a picture right here in front of the Beverly Hills sign. Oh, look at this. Somebody's been uh, testing out their lipstick on the, uh, the receipt. Well, we gotta call it a day because there's a Super Bowl to watch and I just wanted to thank you for coming out, Lauren. This was a blast, and I, I think we so should, much. I think we should do it again sometime. When we have more time, yes. And definitely. we'll, uh, we'll actually. What I was thinking was maybe next time, you and I, we should go up to where the Chatsworth house was, the yes. house that Lucy and Desi lived in before they bought this house. Yes, that sounds sounds awesome. Awesome. Hi, Lauren Hearts. Every, today was amazing. Jordan's awesome. So, thank you. Much love to everybody. All right. Goodbye. Well, that was a lot of fun, and I'm glad that if I was gonna do a Lucy vlog, it was with somebody that knew a lot about Lucy that was excited to see it as well. So now, let's go pick up Ja, and we're gonna head off to Kevin's house for the Super Bowl. All right, time to go grab Ja. I know this guy. Well, I'm over here at Kevin's house. Kevin's got the chili made for the Super Bowl. And uh, I love watching sports with Kevin because we're from the same area of the world, so we have the same sense of humor. And I honestly don't know many people that like sports other than me, so <laughs> it's like the best case scenario. And Jaw loves coming over here, so can't wait to try out the vegan chili. If you guys forgot, Kevin's a vegan, so I eat a lot of vegan food when I'm over here, but in all fairness, he's never made a bad meal, so that was the kind of our deal. I'll try it's anything. It's Cincinnati chili. Oh, it's Cincinnati chili. It's like yes. the Skyline. I showed you guys Skyline when I was in Ohio, so sweet. All right, I've got my coffee. I have my coffee no matter what, always, but Kevin made me a uh, mango chipotle margarita, I believe, with a little bit of lime. And we're watching the, uh, watching the UFC fight before the Super Bowl. All right, it's time for the Super Bowl. We've got a kickoff, and uh, I don't really get that much into football, but I'm gonna watch this, and I, you know, it's always a good time to get a, have a gathering with your friends. Ja, who do you want to win? I don't really, I don't really care who wins. Do you? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I can't believe it. Tom Brady, Tom Brady has not been sacked the whole game, hadn't been touched the whole game. Kevin and I were just saying that something always happens where they always win it, and now he just got the ball stripped away. Wow, this might actually be an Eagles win. They're showing a guy who's in the attendance here who's been a fan since 1933 on their very first season and he's here so he might get to see a victory wow wow the Eagles actually won it somehow they won well good evening my friends congratulations Eagles and we're gonna call it a night you know it's kind of crazy to watch the chemistry on I love Lucy and to see how great Lucy and Ricky Lucy and Desi really were and then to know that when it all ended in 1960, when they were getting a divorce and when the show was ending, they were so at each other's throats that people on set said that if Desi wanted to say something to Lucy, he would yell out, 
would you please tell Miss Ball that I need her to, and she would respond, tell Mr. Arnez that I will do whatever I, and that's how it ended. Pretty sad. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about Lucy if you didn't know her history or more of her history. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see this. And thank you, Lauren, for driving all the way out here to come vlogging with me. I appreciate it. And thank you, Lionhearts, for watching. Hope you guys had a great night. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.